So this week's chapter of One Piece featured a pretty wild plot twist in the form of Kosuke Oden coming back into the story. However, that leaves us with a lot of questions, such as who exactly is this Odin, or if he even is Odin to begin with. But then, who exactly is this mysterious Odin? Well, let's answer that as we go through our usual linguistic breakdown for this chapter. At the start of this chapter, when Hyogoro is about to be beheaded by Yatappe, Ocho mentions that Hyogoro is like a father to them. This isn't just meant as a sign of how close they are, but is in fact a reference to the hierarchy of a Yakuza family. Yakuza families, as is in their name, view themselves as actual families, with a defined father and children, so in that regard Hyogoro really is like a father to them. However, Chopper comes in to save the day by using a counter-virus that he developed in order to kill Queen's virus. He refers to this as Chopper Fake. The Fake, short for bacteriophage usually, is a type of virus that specializes in targeting and killing bacteria. They are parasites that feed off bacteria by taking them over, though they are mostly harmless to humans since they don't attack human cells. You might not have heard of them, but they are the most abundant organism on planet Earth. In fact, there's more of these critters than there is any other organism combined. You probably have some on your face right now. But what's particularly interesting about phages is that they have been recently used in the world of medicine as a counterweapon against bacteria when other medicines like antibiotics don't work. Since phages target specific types of bacteria, they can very easily eliminate a certain type from a host, allowing to heal certain illnesses that other methods may not be able to heal. It's still a highly experimental field in medicine, but it does show a lot of promise. And what Chopter in this chapter did is exactly just that, he developed a virus that could target and kill Quinn's virus. Now, since what he is targeting is a virus, not a bacteria, this is likely a different type of phage, a virophage, one that targets viruses, but it's still a type of virus developed specifically to kill another virus. Since developing an antidote and distributing it to everyone would take much longer, Chopper found a very clever solution by instead developing a virus that would target and kill Queen's virus, since he can administer that simply through inhaling and is far quicker and more effective at saving everyone. For someone to develop a counter virus phage this quickly is insane, easily the most impressive medical feat in the series, but it just goes to show how far Chopper has gone to become one of the greatest doctors in the world. A lot of One Piece fans tend to obsess over power levels and who is stronger, but something like this is also very important, and it shows how important of an asset Chopper is for the crew. Also, the way Chopper administers this virus to the crowd is via gas through a move he calls the Chopper Fake Nebulizer. A nebulizer is a device used in medicine to administer a substance through inhaling. Chopper is doing the same here, though he is brute forcing it by firing a cannon shot into the crowd. The scene then shifts to Momonosuke transforming and later CP0 talking about it, who will elaborate on the creation of the artificial devil fruit Vegapunk created. Now, this scene might seem somewhat minor in this chapter, but it's actually a massive deal. In fact, I would go as far as to say that the information provided here is in itself a bigger deal than even the end twist in this chapter. And it's so big, in fact, that I feel it's too much to go over in this video, especially as I feel it would otherwise be overshadowed by the currently more relevant discussion of who is this Odin. So, instead of going it over this video in a very rushed manner, expect a separate video, probably later this break, where I'll elaborate in much more detail as to why this mention of how artificial dolphins were created is just so important, because it might just be one of the most important keys to understanding how devil fruits were created in the first place. For now, though, let's move to the end of the chapter to address the elephant, or rather, the Chad in the room. Odin. Because yes, this chapter ends with this potentially one of the most unpredictable plot twists Oda has done in such a long time. The return of Kozuki Odin. Or is this Kozuki Odin? Maybe it's someone else posing as him? Well, there's a bunch of different possibilities, so let's go over each of them and judge how likely each are. However, before that, we need to determine the specifics of this Odin, because there are a few things that stand out and might help us narrow down his identity. Visually, it's very clear this is Odin, so if this is an imposter, then it had to be a very accurate replica. 
But what's important to note is that not only does this Odin look like Odin, but he also acts like Odin. Something that is very easy to miss if you're not reading the Japanese version is that in said Japanese version, this Odin has the exact same speech pattern as the Odin we saw in the flashback, and you can tell he has similar mannerisms and body language, so at the very least, if this is an imitation, this is an unbelievably precise imitation who only someone who knew him very well could carry out. There's also a few details about this Odin that stand out. For one, he has his beard, meaning this has to be Odin at the time of his death, or at the very least sometime shortly before it. He also isn't carrying the Aminohaba Kiri or the Enma, which makes sense since the swords were handed off to Toki to be given to Momo and Hiyori. So if this is a copy, again, it must have taken that factor into account. This Odin does also have a longer kimono than the one he is usually seen with, which I've seen some people point out as something odd, but we've actually seen him with said long kimono in the past, so I don't think it really means anything here. Something else important to point out, however, is that while this figure in front of us now is clearly Odin, the one a few chapters ago was not Odin. That figure had a very different silhouette, with long hair and two bangs coming out the front in a shape that matches perfectly someone like Hiyori or possibly also Toki, who also has a very similar figure. Given how this figure healed the scabbards and now Odin appeared, it's quite possible these two figures are potentially working together, and if this Odin is an imposter, then it's possible the other figure was the same imposter in a different form. However, regardless of which it is, it's important to distinguish that these two are separate figures. Kawamatsu did mention that the one he saw tending to them was simply so impossible he had to be dreaming, indicating that it is someone that should not be alive, but he doesn't specify it's Odin, so it still could very much be Toki whom he saw. Which makes sense, since Toki was shown in the flashback to be quite talented at treating wounds, allowing Odin to recover quite quickly. It could have alternatively also been Hiyori, but I don't think Kawamatsu would be as shocked as to say he was streaming if he saw Hiyori there, but let's not completely rule out that possibility either. Either way, we have an Odin and a Toki, or potentially Hiyori, in this room, so let's try to see who could have posed as these two individuals. Scenario number one. This Toki and Odin are actually drawings by Kanjiro. This is what I find to be the most realistic option of all, and the theory that has the highest chance of being right. Since Kanjiro knows who Oden and Toki slash Hiyori are, he would be one of the few capable of making such a perfect replica. We've seen Kanjiro draw perfect creatures with his powers and even a clone of himself in the past, but we don't know if he's able to create the clones of other humans to act just as them. It's one thing to draw an animal behaving like an animal, but it's another thing to draw a human with lingering memories and a specific personality. It is possible, we just have no confirmation of it yet. Furthermore, Kanjiro is, you know, <laughs> supposedly dead, but it is possible he might still be alive in some form, since this is Oda after all. There is, however, one thing that just doesn't quite add up, and it's the fact that... Why would Kanjiro do this? Even if he's trying to trick them to just betray them and kill them, he could have just very easily killed them when they were weakened. It's also possible Kanjiro had a change of heart, but it seems weird that would happen after how intent he was at betraying them all this time. Maybe him acting as a traitor could have all been an act, but he simply sabotaged and endangered them far too much for that to be the case. That's the only oddity here, because otherwise this theory really fits quite well, but that would need to be clarified. Scenario number two. It's Onimaru transforming into Toki and Odin. An idea I'm sure some might come up with is that Onimaru, the Komagitsune, or fox, that assisted Kawamatsu at Wano and that took the human form of the bandit Gyukimaru of Oihagi Bridge to fight Zoro, might be transforming here once again. However, while this sounds pretty logical at first, it's a theory based on a misunderstanding of Onimaru's powers. While Onimaru is designed after the Japanese myth that foxes can transform into humans, in world this seems to simply be a form of the Hito Hitonomi, human human fruit. During the flashback, it's evident Onimaru is just a fox, since he cannot fully understand human speech, only Kawamatsu's emotions and general intentions. Plus, he never transformed in front of him, so it makes sense that originally, at first, Onimaru was a fox, a Komagitsune. However, in the present day, we can see he can transform into a full human, indicating he ate a Hito Hitonomi during those 20 years. 
Particularly in human form, Onimaru looks like a Daruma doll, making many assume he ate a Hito Hitonomi model Daruma, or something of the sorts. What I'm getting at is that unless we have something about Onimaru's fruit we still don't know about, he really shouldn't be able to transform in any person, especially since certain facial traits as a fox, such as his eyebrows, do carry onto his human form. Granted, his powers are still unclear and they're not explained, so maybe he's got some weird fruit that lets him transform into anything, but we already have plenty of fruits that are like that, and there is no indication that his fruit allows him to do that, so I find this very unlikely. Scenario number 3. This token Odin are a user of the Mane Mane Nomi, the clone clone fruit. A potential theory, but while Kurozumi Higurashi did once have the Mane Mane Nomi and even transformed into Odin once, Higurashi is currently dead and the fruit is in Mr. Tui Bonkure's possession, which according to a cover story is still alive deep in Impel Down, so this is easily dismissible as it feels practically impossible. Scenario number 4, it's Katarina Devon using the Inu Inu no Mi duck duck fruit model Kyubi no Kitsune or Nine-Tailed Fox to transform into Tokyo Oden. A slightly more realistic theory than the previous one, as Katarina Devon also has the ability to transform into others. Plus, this would be a big twist since it would mean the arrival of the Blackbeard Pirates at Wano. It's unclear if Devon needs to touch the faces of others to, you know, record their appearances like Mr. Two needed to, so maybe she can imitate someone just by looking at them, however, even accounting for that, there's still a lot of things that don't add up. It's one thing to have imitated Odin based on a picture or something, but there is no way Katarina Devon could replicate his mannerisms or speech pattern without knowing him, even less for someone like Toki. And once again, there is no reason as to why Katarina Devon would just normally heal the scabbards and possess as Odin to help them. For as cool as it would be to see Blackbeard, this theory doesn't really sound very logical once you think about it and feels almost downright impossible. Scenario number 5. This is Hiyori using some unknown devil fruit. What if the person we saw a few chapters ago was not Toki, but indeed Hiyori healing the scabbards? And what if the apparition of Odin here is a devil fruit of hers? Maybe she can create illusions or visions or something like that. It would explain why this Odin is so accurate, why he is purposefully missing the two swords to be consistent here, since Hiyori is aware of where the swords are right now, and why she would heal the scabbards while crying, matching the silhouette. This feels possible, it's just that it's purely speculative, because we have no idea if Hiyori even has a devil fruit to begin with, and the specifics of how such a fruit would work to create such a realistic Odin are hard to consider, since this Odin clearly moved the door, indicating that it is a physically tangible being and not just a simple marriage or illusion. And as I mentioned before, it would be strange for that figure to be Hiyori, since Kawamatsu claimed he had to be dreaming, which I don't think he'd be that shocked about to doubt his very eyes just because Hiyori decided to join them at the raid. So while it is possible, I feel like it's still not that likely. Scenario number 6. This is the Toki Toki no Mi at play, and Toki and Odin both traveled to the future. In other words, these are the real Toki and Odin. Perhaps, at its core, this is the craziest of all these theories, yet, at the same time, it also strangely makes a bit of sense. For starters, it would explain Toki being the one to tend to their wounds a few chapters ago after having a leap ahead in time, just like I speculated a few videos ago. This would make sense, especially since we already saw Toki being knowledgeable in tending to wounds when she first met Odin. If this Odin here is Odin from the past being sent into the future, then it makes sense Toki would tag along as well and that the two would act side by side, explaining these two different figures in this treasure room working together. That said, there's certainly something that doesn't add up. Toki surviving is possible, we didn't see her getting shot, but the camera cut away after, so she could have possibly jumped into the future. However, on the other hand, Odin got shot in the head and fell in a pot of boiling oil that, according to Kaido, had already destroyed a large part of his body. Admittedly, he was smiling in that pot of oil, despite not smiling before, so perhaps he was still, you know, just conscious enough before dying, or maybe the bullet did not kill him, but... You know, in this panel, we see no visible bruises or damage from the oil or headshot. 
Now, again, admittedly, Odin has recovered from grave injuries before, and Oda often likes to have characters endure massively damaging injuries, only for them to be perfectly healed some chapters later. But it still feels odd that Toki would be able to reach Odin in that boiling pot and send him to the future from there. We also know she couldn't have sent him forward from a previous point and then sent him back from the future to return to his original timeline, since Toki made it very clear that the Toki Tokinomi only works forwards, not backwards. This is an ironclad rule of how the Toki Tokinomi works, as it's simply a fruit that lets one leap forward, since going backwards would just screw with the timeline and create split timelines and stuff. The only realistic possible explanation beyond some weird multiverse can of worms that I'd rather not get into is that Toki can use her powers with a delay, setting a timer of source for them to activate or even giving the affected individual the ability to choose when to leap into the future. This seems like a bizarre extra step, but it could explain Odin leaping from the boiling pot into the future and then being able to recover. In fact, during his final moments, Odin does mention that he would be the first one to leave. Now, I always took this as leaving on to the world beyond symbolically, or even more simply being a reference to Kabuki theater, since Odin's entire life is based on Kabuki, but Odin would be the first to, you know, quote unquote, leave the stage. But what if this was meant more literally? Odin did specifically mention in exchange with Toki that he wouldn't die, much like Roger did to Rayleigh. But as I explained in the past, if you've read my analysis of that said chapter, I always assumed this meant something much more simple. Then one only dies when they are forgotten. Indicating that, much like Roger, Hiriluk and many other characters, Odin would not die because there would be those that would remember him to inherit and carry out his dream. So honestly, I just don't think he meant it that literally, and Toki did also cry in private after Odin's death, which just wouldn't add up if she knew he was going to live. For as crazy as the implications of this could be, and as much as there's a part of me that really wants to see this, I'd rather not have Oda create some weird multiverse timeline thingamajiggy, and I just feel this doesn't fully add up in the end. So basically, if you ask me which was the likely scenario to bet on, it would absolutely have to be the first that I mentioned, these being Kanjiro paintings. Kanjiro just makes the most sense to be the one posing as Toki and Odin here, his fruit seems perfectly possible to create something like this based on what we know, and he is one of the few individuals knowledgeable enough about Toki and Odin to be able to create such perfect copies. And Kanjiro feels like a character that is still massively underutilized, so I would love to see more from him. A change of heart to help the scumber seems odd, and Oda would have to address a few discrepancies, but none of that feels unrealistic, it's definitely possible, certainly more than anything else. On the other hand, however, while I know it just doesn't quite add up, there's a part of me that feels like this could be the real Odin. This feels like too big of a plot twist, with too much build-up for several chapters for this to just be a Kanjiro fake-out. I know it's unrealistic for this to be a time-traveling Odin, I know it is, but while my rational mind says that this is very clearly a conjure of painting, my heart is fascinating by the possibility of this really being Odin. And I'm willing to bet some weird crack theory that this could potentially be true, and Odin did in fact leap into the future. But do you think this is actually the case? Do you think what I said makes sense? Which one do you think is the most likely one? Or do you have another theory as to who this could be? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you later during this break with another video. Thanks for watching. And scenario number 7. Enel has decided to dedicate himself to cosplaying Odin. Yeah? <laughs>